Hi, this is Alfauzia Nihar from At Home Tuition. Welcome to our session today. The topic that we are going to discuss in our today's video is Compound Probability. The outcome of a random experiment is known as events. There can more than one number of events associated with an experiment. Am I right? A compound event is nothing but it consists of two or more number of simple events. Likewise, rolling a two Faraday together. Compound probability is nothing but the probability of joint occurrence of two or more simple events. Either all events can be true at the same times or either of them can be true at a time. When at least one of the event holds true at a time in a compound event, then we say that the events are mutually exclusive. Else, they are non-mutually exclusive. In case of non-mutually exclusive events, we have two types of events. The very popular types, independent and dependent. Independent events are the ones whose occurrence does not affect the occurrence of the other. Am I right? Else, the events are termed as dependent events in case the outcome has an impact or effect on the outcome of the other. Okay, so this is the basic definition of compound probability. Now, let us see the formula to calculate, to compute compound probability problems. In the cases when the events are independent, the compound probability can be calculated just by multiplying the probabilities of the two events directly. I will give you the formula first. Let A and B be two independent events. Then, probability of A and B is nothing but probability of A times probability of B. So, in this case, events are independent. When the events are dependent, then the compound probability can be calculated using this formula. Probability of A and B is probability of A times probability of B following A. These are the cases when both the parts of the compound events are true. When one or more part of the compound event holds true, then the probability of the compound event probability can be calculated in this way. So, these are the two cases when the both the events are true. If one holds true, then the formula is, you will be using this formula, probability of A or B, which is equal to probability of A plus probability of B. The word and means all parts of the compound events are true at the same time, while the word R indicates that either or both of the parts of the compound events are true at a time. Basically, when the events are mutually exclusive, we use R. When the events are not mutually exclusive, we use AND. Does this make sense to you so far? So, based on the restriction, you can categorize them in uh, four types. First one is restricted conjunction rule. Second one is general conjunction rule. Third one is restricted disjunction rule. Fourth one is general disjunction rule. Let me list it out in that way. So, we can categorize them under these four categories. Now, let us see the appropriate rules and restrictions along with the examples for each of the rule. First, I am going to start with restricted conjunction rule. Here is the rule to calculate restricted conjunction problem. The restriction for this case is the two events A and B must be independent. For example, uh, if two different cases are included, like rolling a die or sampling with replacement. Okay, I'll take one example and explain you what type of problem is this. For example, what is the probability of getting two heads on a single throw of two coins? So, we are supposed to find probability of H1 and H2. Getting a head on the first throw is H1, so 1 out of 2. And second one is second coin is 1 out of 2. So, just multiply them. Probability of outcome of uh, tossing a coin is 1 out of 2. Am I right? You may either get a head or a tail. So, 1 out of 2, 1 out of 2. Are you clear with this part? For the same question, we can find the probability of getting 5s on 2 roll of a die. So, this is an another case. So, if that is the case, the probability is going to be, if you are rolling a die, totally you will get 6 outcomes. Getting 5 is 1 out of 6. So, you are rolling 2 roll of a die. So, in first roll 1 out of 6, in second roll 1 out of 6. So, the probability would be 1 over 36. So far, we have seen examples which are direct. Now, I am going to take one example with replacement. Let's see how this formula works out for this example. What is the probability of getting 2 kings on 2 draws from a deck? 
So probability of getting king 1 and king 2. Totally there are 52 cards in a deck. How many kings are there? 4. So 4 out of 52 and you are replacing it back. So again you will be having 4 kings in the card deck. Am I right? So 4 over 52 times 4 over 52. Hope you are clear with these examples. So when you are applying this restricted conjunction rule, you should be you should make sure to consider all the favorable combinations and then work out according to this formula. Does this make sense to you? Ok, I'll give one example. Please check whether this rule can be applied or not. What is the probability of drawing a king and queen on two draws from a deck with replacement? There are two ways to be successful here. First, picking a king and a queen or queen and a king. You are going to draw two draws. Ok, so k1, q2 or q1, k2. So this problem involves a disjunction of outcomes. Am I right? So this formula cannot be applied. So we can apply general conjunction rule, the second rule. Ok, let me give you the rule and the restrictions. Here is the rule for general conjunction. The restrictions here are this formula will be best when used with the events A and B are dependent. So this rule applicable when the events are dependent. More than one sampling without replacement is the best condition to use this rule. Ok, I'll take some examples and explain you how to apply this rule. Here is an example. What is the probability of getting two aces from a deck on two draws without replacement? So probability of getting ace 1 and ace 2 given a1. So how many aces are there in a deck of card? 4. And you are not replacing it back and picking one more. It means the total number of cards would be 51 for the second pick. And total number of aces would be 3 because already you have taken 1. 4 over 52 for the first probability and for the second draw you will be having one lesson because they are not replaced back. So this is called B given A. B when A has already happened. Does this make sense to you? And as usual you just have to multiply the fraction. 12 over 220. Uh, you just simplify and calculate. I am getting 1 over 221. Hope you are clear with this example. Ok, I will give you a few more examples for this case. Here is an example. Hope this will do. A concert hall has 10 rows of 10 seats. In a random drawing for seats, you are the first to draw 2 tickets. What is the probability of drawing 2 front row seats? So F1 and F2 denote the 2 front row seats. First, you are having in each row 10 seats are there. There are actually 10 rows. So 10 into 10, 100 seats are totally 100 seats are available. Front seat means only one seat. I mean the first row. Totally there are 10 seats in each of the row. Front seat means 10 out of total 100 seats. If you are already choosing one seat, you will be sitting uh, You'll be sitting on that. So you have to exclude one from this one. Now how many seats will be available in the front seat? Already you are sitting in one seat. So it means 9 seats are left over in the front row. And overall total is 99 because one seat is occupied actually. So the second probability would be 9 over 99. Hope you are clear with this rule. Finding the probability of one case under probability of second case when the previous event has occurred. Do you understand the difference between the first and second rule? Ok, now let us move on to the third rule, restricted disjunction rule. Here is the rule for disjunction. Probability of A or B equal to probability of A plus probability of B. Hope you understand the difference between last two and this one. If the events A and B are mutually exclusive, you can apply this rule. Let me show some examples so you will understand this. Given an urn of 5 red balls, 3 green balls and 2 yellow balls, what is the probability of drawing a red ball or a green ball on one draw? So probability of drawing a red, how many balls are there totally? 5, 3 and 2. So overall total is 10. If you are going to draw the first ball, it should be a red one or a green one. So if it is a red, 5 out of 10. In case if it is a green, it would be 3 over 10. So if it is an R question, you just have to add the probabilities. First check whether the events are mutually exclusive and then apply the formula. So the probability for this case would be, hope you are clear with this rule. This rule is very simple. Ok, now let us move on to the 
Last rule, general disjunction rule. In case if the events EA and B are not mutually exclusive and independent, you can apply this rule. General disjunction rule. Probability of A or B is equal to probability of A plus probability of B minus probability of A and B. So this is the formula. We subtract the probability of both events occurring because we don't want that combination of figure into the calculation twice. If the events are not exclusive, then there are two ways to get A with and without B and two ways to get B with and without A. Am I right? Okay. Uh, if you want to find the combination for A, it could either be A, or A and B or A and not B. And two favorable combinations for B, B and A, B and not A. But only three favorable combinations for A or B. Let me list out that too. A and not B, B and not A, both A and B. So, we need to negate the second combination of A and B occurring together. That's the reason we are subtracting that in the formula. This combination. Does this make sense to you so far? Okay, let us see one example. Here is the question. What is the probability of getting at least one spade from a deck of card on two draws with replacement? So, probability of at least one spade would be probability of getting spade one or spade 2 minus probability of spade 1 times spade 2. Let me show it in calculation. There are 13 spades out of 52 cards and you are replacing it back. So probability of S2 would be 13 over 52 again. So this is how we calculate for that one. Hope you are clear with all the four rules. There is one more rule, negation rule. That rule is applicable when you are supposed to find probability of not an event. Or if you want to find the probability of event, just subtract that from 1. Here is the formula. Probability of an event is equal to 1 minus probability of not an event. This formula is best used when the probability of an event not happening is either known or easily computed. Also consider uh, when disjunctive events are dependent. Hope you are clear with this concept now. In case if you have any query regarding computing compound probabilities, kindly let me know.